Are we filming? Yes, we are. So welcome. Welcome to another podcast, the Flatability Podcast. This is episode 27. So we're we're past the quarter century now, as it were. Um, thank you for, for dropping by. I appreciate that. Um, I'm going to probably be talking for at least half an hour, hopefully not more than an hour, but we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, this is completely unrehearsed. I do have some bullet points uh, written down in my trusty Guildford Mini Extra Slim. Um, and we're, we're going to start, as always, with uh, thank you, because uh, I really, really appreciate not just the fact that you're watching or listening, but also the fact that you're interacting by leaving me comments. And and the comments are important because many of your comments will be featured in future episodes of these podcasts, but also in... I, I, I don't have them every week, and I, I've only done a few of them, but I'm I'm aiming, I am minded... I sound like an English judge. I am minded to do more coffee breaks. And a coffee break is a topical discussion video talking about similar subjects to those that I'm talking about in these podcasts. But I'm, I'm more going to talk about those topics that need visual clues. Now, what I'm trying to do with the podcast, particularly because the Flatability podcast is now on uh, on YouTube Music, uh, which uh, which Google is is making a big thing of, and trying to trying to uh, m they're trying to make it become the de facto place for podcasts, and you know they probably will because that because Google are. Uh, are, are the one of the biggest companies in the world, and they're, they're, they're masters at doing this sort of thing. Uh, so I am minded of the fact that there are many of you out there who are listening to these podcasts rather than watching. And so I sometimes, as you know, I sometimes make mistakes and get carried away and show you something here we are, I'm showing you my file effects. And for those listening, forgive me, because I'm trying not to do that. So these podcasts, ideally, are podcasts where you can, you can, you can see me talking, but they are aimed at... My, I'm trying to make sure that uh, people that like to listen to these uh, get, get full value out of them by not being frustrated if I'm uh, demonstrating something visually that they can't see. Uh, the other thing you'll know, uh, just to confirm, there are no, this is a completely, as f at least at the moment, unless unless YouTube do something crazy like, well, crazy in my, my opinion, uh, force adverts on all... YouTube videos. I mean, they may. I mean, it's it's their party. They can they can do what they want. But uh, while I have control over this sort of thing, uh, you will notice that there are no adverts. Not even at the beginning. This is a completely advert-free experience. Other than I do a few business plugs at the end uh, after everybody else has has gone home. Uh, but perhaps you can forgive me for that. At least I do them at the end after the podcast. Um, but there, are, this is a, this is a, although I talk for ages and ages and ages, this is a, an advert free experience and I want to keep it that way so long as I have control over that process. So welcome to this advert free experience. Um, stats. Let me, let me start with the statistics, uh, because I'm going to try and do that every, every podcast if I can, because I know some people are interested in this sort of thing. Um, so I'm just I'm just uh, referring to my notes here, and I can reveal, not that it's a big reveal, but I'm just I'm just saying how it is. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, over the last twenty eight days, no fewer than seven thousand eight hundred of you, unique visitors to this site, tuned in to at least one. Flatability video. So thank you very much, all 7,800 of you. I, I really appreciate that. Um, and of those, uh, 82 of you uh, in that 
28 day period uh, decided to subscribe. So thank you very much for subscribing. I really, really appreciate that. It helps. Um, I don't know how much of an effect uh, subscribers have uh, on the, the 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 wider promulgation of a channel, but it's all very very gratifying and 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 it's and it's nice to get subscribers. Um, so thank you. Um, now, what else am I going to do? I was going to jot something else done. Um, yes, a couple of things. Um, okay, of those that tuned in to watch. Uh, of they're all over the all over the world now. Um, the fifth most popular country for my videos was drum roll please, India, who are that India has the it's the it's the first time that India has appeared in my top five. I was going to do a top ten, but that was just going to take too much time and be very very boring. So top five. So so the fifth most interested country in terms of viewing figures was India, uh, fourth was Canada, third was G Germany, second was UK and the third and the final one that, who are the most uh, the, the country in which many of my the I, I'm, I'm not even going to edit that out but basically uh, the most popular country for my videos was the USA and they they've been the the top country since I started more or less uh so wherever you are in the world thank you very much one thing that um I uh I before I do anything else I just want to just want to explain something about this this uh 8 p.m GMT thing so you're you are seeing this uh if you're watching this as it's being uh, as it, as it's being uh, uploaded, as it were, I've scheduled it to appear at eight pm GMT UK time, Greenwich Mean Time. And the reason I've chosen eight pm is from a statistic. I mean, it's very very nerdy, but from a statistically from a statistical point of view, at eight pm Greenwich Mean Time more people in the world are awake than at any other time in my opinion after looking at countries on around the time zones so uh, so there's a method in the madness if this was just uh going out to the uk i would probably choose a, a different time uh but uh, 8 p.m you can't get it right i can't get it right for everybody um, so apologise to uh, those of you in Australia. Uh, it, it, Eight PM GMT is a little bit of a stretch, I know. So I I, I hear you, I hear you, but um, it is what it is with a global audience. Uh, so there we go. Um, just uh, just before we get into the 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 the, the meat of this podcast, um, if you want to know which which language is translated the most in terms of the subtitles? It is Japan. Okay, so um, first of all, Ink and Paper Thursdays. You will notice that on Thursdays, uh, you, you are now seeing some ink and paper videos. These ink and paper videos are ones where I call it ink and paper rather than pen and paper because my interest is in largely inks and paper rather than pens, but different pens, particularly fountain pens, will feature in those videos on a rotating basis. Um, but it's it's uh, it's a subject that I that might end up on a completely separate channel. I don't know yet, uh, but at the moment I am uh, I'm attacking them on i'm adding them on to uh the flatability channel and i'm restricting them to uh thursdays so that people that are not interested in ink and paper such as it is uh that, that they know that if anything pops up thursday it's going to be ink and paper nothing nothing else so um i'm trying to I'm trying to sort of organise myself as there are uh, there's there's significantly 
a greater amount of content than, than there has been in the past. Uh, essentially, uh, I'm going to restrict my videos to do with ink and paper and pen testing, if you like, on Thursdays. If you're a channel member, you'll see them popping up all over the time because when I make a video, I immediately make it available to channel members 24-7. As soon as I've, I don't schedule them, I make them available immediately. So uh, uh, regular, the, the wider viewing public, uh, including subscribers, uh, um, there's more structure uh, so that I hold them back and then release them on the appropriate day. I hope that makes sense. I'm trying to trying to get more organised, particularly because I'm I'm providing I'm creating several videos a week now. Uh, so I, so I need some kind of some kind of structure. So that's that's what I've been doing. I can talk about that more. Um, and uh, thank you for your kind comments and feedback about that subject. Um, Okay, um, a uh, subscriber says, um, what a, actually, no, sorry, a channel member, what a great discovery of this new notebook, new as in NU. There's a UK-based company that calls, calls themselves new, NU, and uh, they've been going for about 20 years and they produce some really, really interesting books, notebooks, uh, books for students, books for reporters, all sorts. But I am, um, I'm actually really, really impressed with the paper. Um, and this channel member goes on to say, you're the first I've seen to test them with a fountain pen. Um, interesting, really, really interesting. And this, this, comment is coming from a channel member who's really into fountain pens in a big way far more than I am I mean I'm just starting but but this guy this channel member is seriously seriously into fountain pen use so so um well I'm I'm happy to I'm happy to have created that video incidentally I currently have waiting to be tested quite a large number of different new or NU notebooks. So watch this space. Um, someone asks, can you find and review a bright red orange, red hyphen orange? Um, this, we're talking about ink. Uh, I currently have three red stroke orange inks. Uh, one is fabulous. One is not great. And there's another one that's, that's, that's really, really good as well. Um, you're just going to have to wait, uh, because I don't want to, uh, reveal, play my cards, um, too, uh, too openly. Uh, but I do like orange. I do like red. In fact, uh, when I was at school, I got in trouble because I started using... I mean, I, I've talked about this before, but, but I'll, I'll talk about it again. I started off with some red quink ink. Um, made by Parker back in the day. I was delighted to discover uh, a few months ago that, that Parker still make ink. Um, and I got in trouble for using red ink, uh, for obvious reasons, because red is the colour of a uh, pen for teachers marking work. Um, excuse me. Uh, so I was asked to change it. So, um, what I did rather than change the ink completely, I started mixing ink. So I was adding black ink to the red Parker Quink ink. Drop, dry, drop, drop by drop, because it doesn't take much to black ink to change the colour of red ink. And, and I was trying to, 
uh, I I was in a I you know I was a, I was a an an anarchist at school you know uh, especially in the science lab my goodness um, but uh, I um, I. I was trying and I successfully achieved the colour of blood, uh, <laughs> which probably didn't go down too well. But uh, I, I am a fan of red inks and I like orange. There's a, there's a fantastic orange that I've recently discovered that you will that you will uh, know about um, if you saw one of my recent. Uh, ink and paper videos last Thursday. Um, I, uh, I I will have more because there are lots of red and orange inks out there. So, uh, so yes, the answer is yes, I will. Quite a few, actually. Okay. Um, a channel member says, and uh, this is praise indeed. Thank you very much. Uh, Neil, you go above and beyond for us members. Um, I, uh, I, I'm, as, as everyone knows, I am working hard to create as many videos as I can. Hopefully they're quite interesting. Uh, and that includes making videos exclusively for channel members that will never be visible to the, na I was going to say the naked eye, but... <laughs> Uh, but I'm, I, if you become a channel member, and th and this isn't the plug, I try and keep the plugs to the ends. But uh, if you if you do become a channel member, you will discover that there are I make videos exclusively for channel members, as well as videos that members see before everybody else. But uh, after a few days or a few weeks. Uh, they, they, I make them available to the wider viewing public. So, so you're there's just a slightly frustrating delay there. Uh, if you want to join and find out what's what's going on, then you'll see a, a, a link on this page. Thank, thank you very much in advance. If you do that, um, okay. Another channel member says, I tried using a sketchbook with my fountain pen, and it was a failure. This is, again, ink and paper. Every Thursday. And I will be... There may be one, there may be two, there may be more than two videos. In fact, uh, this recent week, this week, last Thursday, uh, I... I believe I uploaded f no fewer than five videos. Um, so here I am testing all these notebooks and paper and uh, and pens as well. Um, why am I trying sketchbooks? Because they're not really designed to be notebooks and the paper can be very, very thick and heavy and sometimes more expensive because... If you're pricing per sheet or per page, sketchbooks can can often uh, cost more because the 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 book costs a certain amount, but the number of pages in the book uh, are fewer than you might find in in, in a in a notebook. Um, but I of the of the of the ones that I've tested so far. I'm actually really, really pleased. Um, excuse me, I'm having a bit of trouble uh, this afternoon. I've uh, the medication I'm on uh, is just making me yawn. Uh, sorry, it's not because I'm bored or anything or tired. I just for some reason uh, it's it's a real struggle. But I'm going to persevere. Uh, forgive me for the the uh, the slight uh, technical hitch there. Um, uh, but the show goes on, as they say. Uh, so I will be testing a lot of notebooks and a lot of sketchbooks. And my personal feeling is that a sketchbook could um, could potentially be a, 
a re make a really really good notebook especially if you're going to use it as a journal if if it's just going to be uh, for rough notes then it's probably a bit of overkill but i i have uh i have a gut feeling that um you know there are sketchbooks out there that that could work as a journal for instance so i'm going to persevere another channel member says uh and they and they are referring to uh my recent uh my recent uh trip to my local w h smith's store w h smiths have sold filofaxes for literally decades and i mean decades um and uh my channel member says thanks for sharing neil i'm i'm always up for some virtual shopping so this virtual shopping thing I'm planning to do more. Um, I, uh, I, it's taken me by surprise. I only did it at random in my local Double X Smith store, um, and uh, it, it was a very, very popular video. So, so I've done it again at my local Double X Smith store, and. Um, it was well received, so I'm going to carry on. I am going to be in London at some point over the next few weeks, uh, certainly within a month, and uh, I'm planning on uh, I'm planning on doing some more virtual shopping. So so watch this space as it were, because I I enjoy it, and uh, hopefully hopefully there'll be something in there for everyone. Uh, another channel member. Um, there's a lot of comments from channel members. Uh, it's um, one of the perks of being a channel member, I guess, is the fact that you are not not totally guaranteed, uh, but um, one of the uh, one of the perks of being a channel member is that you are more likely to have your comments featured in a in in a in a future video. So there we go. So another channel member says, um, "Thanks, Neil." I like the updates. It feels very personal. So what this channel member is talking about is the community section of uh, YouTube. So if you look along the top line, uh, one of the one of the one of the uh, things that you can click on is videos. Uh, another one is it says community. If you click on there, then you will see the posts that I I post, and the and these are just scripts where I'm I'm not doing a video. I'm I'm talking about something, uh, and in general, I use that for updates and some brief thoughts, and I do this for the wider viewing public, including subscribers. But I'm also I also have a section that is specifically for channel members and can't be seen by anyone other than channel members um and so i'm 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 discussing these things with my channel members and 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 also the wider viewing public uh so bear that in mind i'm i am trying to i'm 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 just trying to keep everyone updated about my thoughts sometimes i i use the community page to ask questions uh uh couple of months two or three months ago i asked about i used it to ask people about what they thought about adverts on my youtube videos because adverts earn me some money uh which which helps me to purchase things like ink and pens and notebooks and filofaxes which i can then report on uh and 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 so uh it 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 uh, gives me an opportunity that I haven't had before, uh, an opportunity for which I am very, very grateful. So, so adverts are a kind of um, uh, a bit of a necessary evil. But what I am trying to do is do it very, very sparingly. And so I use the community page in this particular case to ask people what they thought was acceptable. Uh, and so I am, I'm kind of just going along with what people think i.e uh some of my videos like on like podcasts don't have any adverts at all 
uh, some or the majority have uh, have a couple of adverts at the beginning, and then you, and then once they're out of the way, you can settle down to a, a like an ad-free experience. Uh, some of my longer videos do have uh, like a, what they call a mid-roll ad, which is like like adverts halfway through your TV program, uh, where you go and get a cup of tea and then <laughs> settle down for the next half. Uh, so I do have some of those, not very many, but I do have some of those. Uh, and I, what I do is for channel members, I guess this is another channel member perk. I'm not trying to plug channel membership, but, uh, channel members will, will discover that, uh, all my videos are, are ad free, uh, at least for the period where they're only available for channel members once they become available for the wider viewing public then i turn the turn the adverts on again but for that initial period uh they are advert free of course if you want a, i mean i subscribe to uh youtube premium uh which i think is uh for me i really like it because then i don't have to watch any adverts at all um at, but i do appreciate that not everybody can afford to do that or wants to spend that money. Uh, and I do appreciate that not everybody wants to get involved in paying a premium price of, you know, no matter how little, uh, for, for channel memberships on YouTubes. But I think there's something for everywhere, something for everyone. But the community page I, I use a lot for both channel members and non-members. So I have two separate uh, community pages, if you like. Channel members and non-channel members. Uh, so it, I, I use it a lot. It seems to, seems to work. So thank you for that question. It's a, that's an interesting question. Thank you. <coughs> Moleskin notebooks. Now, this is a, this is a hot potato as many of you know. Uh, I have used Moleskin notebooks for at least 12 years. And I love them. Uh, I'm not going to hold one up because I'm trying to make this a, a listening experience, but um, most of you will know what a Moleskin or Moleskina or Moleskin, I, you know, it depends. Um, most people will know what a what a moleskin notebook looks like. Uh, most people will uh, be familiar with the fact that there's lots of that the, the, the paper, the paper quality is a bone of contention. Um, some moleskin notebooks have very poor uh, ink control. Others have very good ink control. It depends on where the, perhaps where the paper was made. Uh, it's a cause of frustration and it's a topic that is discussed on uh, Facebook, Moleskine user groups, of which there are many. Um, but this chap, uh, this chap says, um, talking about Moleskine notebooks, I've never liked this much it just feels like a... Oh, actually, this is a lady. Sorry, my, my apologies. Um, I've never liked these much. I just feel like a Tesco notebook with a fancy logo. That is an interesting point because I, I'm not sure whether Tesco do have notebooks. I'm probably They probably do. I know they sell uh, printer paper because I've got my... I've got some in my, uh, there's a, there's a, I live close to a Tesco store here in the UK. Tesco, for those of you who don't know, are probably the leading supermarket in the UK. Um, in terms of the number of stores. And they do have typically a stationary section. Uh, and they, on, I didn't look. Uh, but I'm sure they do, but they, they sell notebooks. Um, yes, it is, it is the case that moleskins are expensive. Uh, you are, 
you are paying for the uh, f your your. I mean, they have lovely. I mean, the, the moleskins are very very nice. They look nice, and the, they there's there's marketing that has to be paid for. It's very very slick marketing. Um, you're kind of buying into the the sort of moleskin name in a way. Uh, and there's no, there's no issue with that. I mean, at the end of the day, the, the marketing is marketing and, and, and with Moleskine or Moleskina, the marketing is very, very slick and that has to be paid for. Um, but I've never seen, I've never, never seen a comment like this before, uh, to the extent that it just feels like a Tesco notebook with a fancy logo, but there is some truth in that. There is some truth in that. Uh, I'm sitting on the fence because I I like them. Um, I I was using one. I mean, I'm I'm searching around and I can see on the shelf in front of me. I mean, I've got I have got notebooks coming out my ears, as they say in the UK. Uh, but I I'm currently using them. I I I like the feel of moleskin notebooks, but I don't like the paper. Uh, so I tend to use a. Uh, my weapon of choice when it comes to moleskins or moleskinas is a Pilot G2. Uh, and that works very, very well. You can still see the Pilot G2 shadow through the pages, but um, it is so bold. The G2 is so, with, with, the, with the broad nib, the one millimetre point, not the 0 0.7, it is so bold that it, it's easy to see even through the, the 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 sort of heavy shadowing, as it were, I, d I'm, I don't want to get too much into the nitty gritty of Molsons, but uh, um, this lady has a point. Uh, but I'm sitting on the I'm sitting on the fence uh, because I do like them, uh, and the ones that are have have really really good paper. That's the key. If if you have one, uh, if you are successful with finding one, then that's really, really good. Uh, we're going to stay on Moleskine Notebooks. Uh, this guy says, um, and he's, uh, his name's Tyrone, and he's from the uh, one of the larger Moleskine Facebook groups. I'm just going to blow my nose again. Sorry. Okay. Um, he says, he says, wonderful video. I'm starting to live for your videos. I mean, that's praise indeed. Thank you very much. And he continues, the price increase, and he's talking about moleskins. The price index, the price increase in the past few years has been staggering. Having said that, I am planning a Smithson £130 journal. And this is this is the point that I want to discuss. He says, at 30p a day, I would be happy if I could use as I want. They are on a very slippery slope. Now, I'm, I'm interpreting that as he's saying that the Smithson Planner is £130, uh, which works out at 30p per page. Um, let me, let me just see, let me just, let me just try something. I'm just, I'm just doing a calculation. Uh, so let's, let's go for 30p times 365 days. That's, that works out at £109.50. So there's, I haven't seen a Smithson planner but inevitably with planners you get all sorts of extra pages for goals and to-do lists and lots of other things so uh that actually that 130 pounds sounds about right so just extrapolating those figures let me let me just dim the lights there on my screen uh so that's that's probably quite accurate um tyrone if you're listening 30p a day so this is the thing How many people out there, and I'm, I'm just, uh, I'd, I'd love your comments, so please respond in the, uh, below to this, to this, uh, to this video. 
If uh, and I, I haven't actually seen the Smiths, uh, Smiths, uh, the Smithson, which is a UK company, very, very posh, very, very high end stationery. Uh, I haven't seen one of these hundred thirty pound journals, but if you paid a hundred thirty pound for a journal, it's clearly going to be very, very good quality. Let's hope it'll be very, very good quality paper, well designed, a, a like a lovely pleasurable thing to use over the course of a year. I'm assuming it's a, it's a yearly planner rather than an 18-month planner or a six-month planner. Um, would people out there be willing to pay 30p a day, effectively, for a planner that is very, very, very high quality? Compared to, for instance... Typically, 8p a day for a Filofax. Uh, maybe between 10 and 12p for a mole skin, possibly. Um, it's, it's worth a thought, isn't it? If that gives, if it, Im, Im, if it, uh, imbues you with a, um, with a feel good factor, a bit like a decent pair of shoes, um, or a nice fountain pen, uh, you can you can have a fountain pen for for less than a pound on Amazon, or you could spend over a thousand pound for a fountain pen. You could have a Mont Blanc for about seven or eight hundred quid, uh, and it would write lovely. But would the would there be enough feel good factor to 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 pay seven hundred pound for a pen instead of ninety nine p for a pen? Who knows? Who knows? That is, that is a decision that only uh, an individual can make, um, commensurate with their income. But is thirty p a day affordable for many who are into planning? And now I know that sometimes I look at planners, and I think twenty pound for a planner. £30 for a planner, £40 for a planner, I, I think that's outrageous. However, here we are. This chap is Tyrone. He's suggesting that he's going to use, uh, because he's unhappy with the quality of Molson paper. Uh, he is, I don't know whether he's thinking about it or whether he's done it, but he's done the maths. So he's obviously thinking about it if not actually using it already, uh, he's alluding to the to the idea that having a, a really, really good planner, uh, which is going to, where he's effectively going to be paying 30p a day, uh, he's, he's, he's alluding to the notion that it's worth it to him. Um, I mean, I, I, I'd never really thought about it in that way, but to, to be honest... Um, 30p a day is, if you have that, if you have the planning mentality, and many of us do, uh, if we're interested in paper-based productivity, uh, having heavy bleed through on poor quality paper, uh, would be really, really difficult to accommodate in one's own, uh, um, uh, perspective and des de 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 desire of quality of life from a paper-based productivity, productivity perspective. I mean, I know that's a bit of a mouthful, but you get my drift. As they say, they say in the UK. Excuse me, I am really struggling here, and I'm going to press. I'm going to press on, but uh, my apologies for not being at my best. He ends by saying. They are on a very slippery slope. And clearly he's not talking about Smithson. He's talking about his relationship, his potential relationship and apparent relationship with Mols the Molskina company. He seems to be saying that A, he's not happy with the paper quality and B, he says that, and I, I quote again, the price index, the price index, increase in the past few years has been what he terms as staggering, i.e. it's gone up more than he had thought or hoped. Um, 
it's an interesting one. Uh, let me know your comments. Um, my personal thought is, I, I mean, I really like moleskin, so I like the handling. I actually like the feel of the paper and the boards and, and how it's constructed. And I like the A5 ones because they're slightly narrower than some other A5 notebooks, nominal A5, and so they can more easily fit in my jacket pocket. And crucially, they have curved corners which won't cut into the lining of my jacket pocket whereas uh i mean i'm, I'm not going to show them up but uh i have got some very expensive notebooks where they have sharp 90 degree corners where you don't really want to put them in a pocket at all uh moleskin ones are pretty good with that i love i love the form factor so again i'm sitting on the fence but it's an interesting concept i've i've banged on about this this particular point that tyrone makes thank you very much to tyrone uh from the moleskin facebook group uh he's 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 saying that you know maybe buying a really really expensive planner instead uh which will in this in his calculations cost him 30p a day to to, to run uh, would be something worth considering. Uh, let me know. Okay, next point. Okay, um, window shopping, and this is the this is the last point in this podcast. We come out to forty two minutes. Um, I'll try and keep it within an hour. Uh, but this is this is another featured discussion that I want to talk about. Um, and it's about window shopping again. So let me read to you what this viewer says. Um, Smiths, as in W. X. Smiths, Smiths aren't going to stock. And I and I, I, let me let me just quantify this. So I went in, and uh, you'll have to watch the the video, the window shopping video. Uh, but basically, I went in a few days ago. And they've got a good selection of inserts, a reasonable collection of inserts. Now, bear in mind uh, that we are now into, I'm recording this in uh, March. Uh, so many of the diaries would have disappeared because people tend to buy them in January or even December. Uh, but they still had a reasonable stock. Uh, it looked pretty, pretty, pretty well stocked to me. Um, but they didn't have any... Uh, of the Filofax brand in terms of uh, binders. They had their own W.S. Smith brand of binders and the inserts were a mixture of genuine Filofax ones, Filofax ones and W.S. Smith ones. W Interestingly, one of my viewers commented and said that uh, they weren't sure whether this, con this continues, but at, at some point in the past... Uh, Filofax were actually printing W. X. Smith's in own brand inserts, which is interesting. I didn't know that. Um, but the uh, but but the contributor d didn't know whether that was still the case. Who knows? But um, this viewer says, and let me read it to you because it's quite interesting. Smiths aren't going to stock higher value Filofax binders when they know they're just going to be mauled. And mauled uh, is, a, is a term in the UK for um, rough handling, which could cause wear and tear or dirt. Uh, if, if they know they're just going to be mauled and put back, and if they did have a decent stock of Filofax binders, they wouldn't sell so many of their own brand. Sad but true. They're not the station that they were in what he calls the good old days. W. H. Smith's. Um, it's one of the oldest retail brands in the UK. They started, they were stationers, and they started all the way back in 1792. So just over, just over 250 years ago. Uh, 1892, 1992, no, not, not 250, uh, 230 
Yeah, 232. Okay, um, so they've been going a long time, which is very, very unusual. But it's one of those brands that you will see at, not just in the UK, you'll see W.H. Smith's, a, uh, like a kiosk, selling news and stationery and sweets and everything uh, in airports, railways. They've, they've been uh, on railway stations here in the UK since 1848, uh, almost almost the birth of, uh, of the railways here. Um, certainly, uh, when I go into London, I use the, uh, I get, get into Euston Station, one of the principal railway stations in London. And, uh, uh, there has been a W. H. Smith kiosk, if you like, uh, in Euston Station since 1848. So that's a long time. That is a long time. Um, and they're at airports and they're also in the UK high streets. Uh, and they also run a huge company, uh, distributor, distributing news, newspapers, uh, that's been going over a hundred years. Um, and also, um, as you know, on the uh, on the back of every book, there is a there's a international an ISBN an international standard book number. Well, that was introduced that 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 numbering system that that is on the back of every every book worldwide that was introduced by W. H. Smith years and years and years decades ago. So they've got they've been there a long time. Uh, in recent years, they've had some tough competition for instance although although staples of uh, are no longer they no longer have stores in the uk um they you know there's there's more there's more um there's more competition than, than they've they've ever faced before i mean they're 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 still working hard and they're still here and they're it's still expanding and buying and selling other brands etc other companies um, and, you know, I mean, if, uh, we were talking about, uh, I was discussing Tesco just now and you go into a Tesco brand and, and there is a, there is an aisle or at least a shelf full of stationery. So they're, they're, they are taking some of, uh, WX Smith's traditional market share, but I want to, I want to just briefly go back to i i have a a, a kind of uh, nostalgic affinity with wh smiths because back in 1993 i was in uh, a wh smiths branch and i i just happened to be looking at the filefax selection because I, I had been given a, not a Filofax, it was actually a W.H. Smith's binder, uh, the year before as a, as a Christmas present, as it were. And it wasn't very good. And I, and I was using it, but I didn't know at the time what flattability was. But my, my, the problem with the book that, the, 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 the binder that I had was, I couldn't really use it because it had no flattability at all. You had to hold it open in all, with one hand so you could you could write on it, and it, it was just ridiculous. And I just happened to pick up at random. I'm going to uh, those who are just reading. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Uh, oh, I've got it here. Those who are those who are watching are seeing me hold up the book, the Filofax that I bought from W. H. Smith in 1993, and I use it more or less every day, and it's in fantastic condition. Uh, it's it's a bit battered, but but you know it's it's uh, it's it's good. Works fine. The rings are fine. It's even got its original popper cap that sometimes is so often is missing with with english made binders and this was made 
Uh, I'm going to put it down because uh, I'm supposed to be describing this in an audio podcast. Uh, it was one of... I bought it from W.S. Smith, so I picked it up at random. So the one I picked up, I mauled it. If you, I was handling it. I was opening it. And although probably it wasn't pristine, you know, I imagine that, you know, although I bought this new, I wasn't the first person to pick it up and open it. I could, I just picked it up on the shelf. It wasn't in a box. It wasn't in any sort of plastic wrapping. It was just as, as you can imagine. It was just there. Um, I didn't think about the fact that mine wasn't possibly pristine. I just picked it up, liked it. And I was the thing that made me decide to buy it. And, and it was just at eye level. I didn't even look at, at the, the range. It was black. It was a nice colour for me. It was sort of business-like. And I thought, yeah, why not? And I pulled the trigger on it there and then. Um, but it was there. And back in that day, I can't remember how, you know, what the range was like. But it was, uh, you know, as, as far as I was aware, it was a, a Filofax range. And I, I was unfamiliar with Filofaxes, even though I, I was using a, a, a ring binder uh that was a personal size ring binder for a few months before. And I've I've enjoyed it ever since. It 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 was pure luck because I've subsequently discovered over the years, and particularly over the last ten years, that this Filofax Sherwood, which it was one of the very last models to be made in the UK, just happened to be one of the best the the, the best examples ever made in the history of uh, of um, the, the Filofax brand. Uh, there, were, there were some that were more expensive. I paid, I paid £49.99 for it, £50, back in 1993, which is uh, about just over £100 in today's money. So similar price to uh, um, an original or a Molden or maybe a Norfolk. You know, so which are similar quality. So, price was price was quite reasonable, um, and I just I just stroke potluck, and here I am uh, running a channel uh, dedicated to paper based productivity systems, but part of that is using a Filofax, which. It's not the the greatest invention in the world, but but I I actually find I think Filofax is, and other brands are available too. But I th I think it's a fantastic business tool, absolutely fantastic. But it was sitting on the shelf of W. Smiths, and it must have been handled by other people before I bought it. Um, and it was the good old days, perhaps. Well. It's a difficult thing, and I agree with the uh, with the comment with the, with the person that commented on this. Um, there is a risk. There is a risk that that binders are going to be mauled, uh, damaged, perhaps uh, they might get dirty. Um, so it's a really really difficult thing. I mean, if you look at the if you look at the W. S. Smith's website, there are that right now. There's just about they they do they are available online, uh, virtually every single binder that Filofax Filofax have, so you can order it. And um, I don't know whether it's click and collect or whether they'll do postage, but probably both. Um, so there is a risk, and also the 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 the, the commenter is right. If you it, you know, there's only a limited amount of retail space in a store, you know. Um, they have to get the balance right. Uh, would they sell? What would be the profit per square foot if they tried to sell a Norfolk or a Malden or an original uh, for for over a hundred pounds uh, compared to their own binders, which I believe were fifteen pounds when I did the window shopping? I didn't. I didn't. Uh, mentioned the price but I believe they were £15 which is an amazing bargain isn't it I think they were 15 they might be more go back freeze the frame see if you can spot zoom in see if you can spot the price but I believe they were £15 and they were basic binders um, 
you know, so there's no harm in that because at the end of the day, um, a basic binder for £15 would probably be absolutely ideal for, say, one of my grandchildren, one of my granddaughters, for instance. Who knows? Um, there's got to be something there for everybody at every price point. Uh, so it is one of the, it's actually one of the, 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 the one of the very few products that I can think of where you can have a perfectly functioning product that at one end of the scale can cost £15 and at the other end of the scale you take the the most expensive Filofax model in the range right now it's over £200, £250, something like that, not sure and there are ones even more expensive from other other manufacturers like Amiga and, and, and a few others uh, and uh, Mulberry, for instance, um, and there are some very exotic ones that 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 would cost anything up to a thousand pound and more. Who knows? Um, and s certainly some of the uh, some of the uh, rarer ones, uh, second hand on eBay, fetch a lot of a lot of money, as I as I know, as a as a Firefox dealer. Um, but. It, the jury's out. I mean, I mean, as far as the mall is concerned, this is this is my this is my opinion. I've also done a, I've also done a, a window shop recently where I had a look at the layout of the Filofax range in my John Lewis store. John Lewis are fairly upmarket uh, in the UK. They have several branches. Um, John Lewis are, uh, were uh, and still are. Uh, they have a, a. They're not high, high ends, but they're fairly high. They're not in the league of Harrods, but they are much, much higher than Double X Smiths when it comes to stationery. And they, their, their, their display islands, if you like specifically has a couple of spaces like t miniature tables designed so that people can place a binder on that table and open it i'm going to blow my nose again excuse me they they it is designs it is designed so that people can place a binder on a level surface and open it and and check out the merchandise um There will be some some attrition, some attritional wear and tear to those binders for sure. I don't know what they do with them. Uh, personally, I would I would give them a time limit and then uh, sell them in some other way uh, as used examples. I remember once I bought an entire display kit, X display kitchen from John Lewis. Uh, uh, I did a deal with them. Um, so I wonder whether they do that for X display stuff. They might well have a, a distribution opportunity. Quite often, it's an, like an outlet store, isn't it? Um, whether it's online or bricks and mortar, this is very, very common. Um, so that you can have a throughput of display items which are used, uh, particularly clothes, but also Filofaxes, furniture, what have you, uh, where you can have a general throughput so that you've got new items all the way, or, you know, regularly coming in and items that are subject to handling, uh, handling wear and tear are disposed of before they get to the point where they're unsaleable. And so that might be what, uh, what John Lewis do. Uh, it's, uh, you know, with, um, with, uh, W. Smith, I don't know what they do, um, but, you know, we'll, we'll see or not, as the case may be. Um, certainly W. Smith have been, uh, uh, online for a quarter of a century now. So they, they were quite an early adopter of the internet. Uh, so we'll see, but, um, the jury's out. It was an interesting experience. And I'm going to be doing some more window shopping in the, in the near future. We'll see. Um, 
So, what I want to do now uh, is, to those of you that are just here for the podcast, I want to uh, I want to say that this is the end of the podcast. Thank you very much. Uh, there is going to be. I'm just going to carry on uh, after I've said goodbye to most of you, because I want to talk about the business side of things we and 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 that's going to be for channel members and and you're very very welcome to listen in if uh, even if you're not a channel member um uh, but i'm i'm i've been doing this for the last few uh episodes so that uh, uh i don't want to upset people by plugging my business such as it is halfway through the uh podcast uh, I'm just leaving it at the end, so at least you've got a choice. Uh, but for those of you leaving us now, thanks very much. And until my next podcast or next video, goodbye. So, are you still with me? Fantastic. If you are, um, I want to talk about uh, um, the rotation of product links in my description uh as you as you've seen recently uh i have some product links which some not all of them not all of them have uh not all of them are, are affiliate links but uh a lot of them have an affiliate link and also have an affiliate link to ebay because i have my own ebay channel uh, and I make a small commission sometimes. If someone clicks on one of my affiliate links and then they subsequently purchase a product, then I get a small commission. And that commission goes to buying further products for me to test. So it, so it is a self-fulfilling prophecy, which benefits me financially and it benefits, hopefully, the viewers, you the viewers, because it means I've got, I, I, I've got the opportunity to test more things that I would otherwise have been able to do without that small amount of money that comes through uh, affiliate links. So this is a very, very common thing, as you know, uh, online. Um, but I want to, I just want to talk briefly about uh, how I'm rotating these in the, in each of these descriptions. Now I'm, I am, um, what you've noticed is that I, I do a bulk update. So the descriptions are identical. By necessity, I cannot, I cannot update. Uh, I think I've got about two hundred and ninety videos now. It would take me a month Sundays to individually update them. So I just update them as a as a bulk update. Um, and what I'm doing is because there's a there's a limit. Uh, for those of you who don't know, for uh, YouTube have a five thousand character limit in the description which means that I can only have about 20 products, even though I'd love to put 100 products in there, uh, there's, a, there's a limit. Uh, and the reason for such a minimal limit is because I, I like to um, not only to give a brief description of the product as whether or not I like it or not, uh, but also um, I if there is a global link uh, for the products in your particular country, then I will put not just the UK affiliate link, but also the global link, if such a link exists. Um, and I rotate them. So every time I have a new product, then I will add it to the description, but that means I will remove, uh, I will remove one. So I try and rotate it a little bit. And uh, the products you see are all ones that I have purchased. Uh, with my own money, I might add, uh, so that I can remain uh, sort of fairly independent and, uh, and without the uh, the obligation to give a good report to a product that might turn out to be really, really bad. And, and you know I'm quite hard-hitting with these descriptions uh, um, because I'm being completely upfront and honest about those products. Uh, but clearly, many of the products I've bought turn out to be really, really good. And if that's the case, then then uh, I I link to them. Uh, products that I'm not very happy with. I'm not really in the business of uh, of knocking products. I I just don't 
I just don't give you a link, you know, simple as. Um, <coughs> so that's just a, that's just a little bit about the, uh, uh, the descriptions. It's a, it is a limited thing. Uh, one of the disadvantages of doing that, of course, is that I don't, I'm not able to put, uh, chapters in the, uh, podcast chapters i might possibly do that in the uh in and pin it on a comment but i haven't got around to it very very sorry about that um it's just it's just the way it is from a technical point of view um ink and paper okay as channel members you will know that uh you're receiving i'm basically as soon as i make a video and upload it, I'll make it available to you immediately. So that could be night and day. And, and it's difficult when we talk about night and day, because you're all over the world. Uh, if I upload some at two in the morning, uh, uh, for some people that will be that their lunchtime. You know, it's just the way it is uh, with a global audience. So uh, I, uh, you know, it, from a local point of view, if it, you know if you if you are if that's the middle of your night then then no doubt you are in control of your phone and you put it onto silent uh, or switch off the alerts at night etc you know we're all doing uh, we're all in control of how our devices alert us um, so I'm just uploading uh, at, uh, at, at times that uh, I, I just upload as soon as I've uploaded it. Um, but uh, the wider view in public, they will be seeing ink and paper videos. Um, I'm aiming to release them each week at 8pm uh, GMT for the wider viewing public. Uh, and I think last time I did this last week, a few days, uh, uh, two days ago, uh, I think I uploaded five. I switched on five of them. It's not always going to be that. It might just be one, or it might be two or three. Uh, this week it's been five, so that was quite good. And also, I'm trying to, I'm trying different formats. Uh, and depending on the feedback I get, I will probably refine that process, that 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 uh, that that format for ink and paper but it's a fascinating subject it's a bit of a sideline because the main thing is paper-based productivity systems but there are so many people in my opinion that are interested in ink and paper that are also introduced that are interested in paper-based productivity that uh including me that i want to share that with you um so there we go uh next subject merch or merchandise i am i am working on some mugs i promise not t-shirts not t-shirts but i am working with my daughter uh on some ideas for merchandise it's a it's it is a hush hush project as it were I'm not going to give any details about it, but uh, I know that some people uh, they've alluded to the idea that uh, they would love me to to uh, create some merch. And like many YouTubers, uh, I'm I'm going to go down that rabbit hole. Uh, so it'll be fun. <laughs> it will it will be fun, uh, even if. I am the only person that buys something and then that will uh, no doubt make an appearance in my videos. Uh, it's a bit of fun. And also, I'm curious about the process of merchandise. Uh, so it's a learning experience for me. But you may find that uh, you'll, you'll see some merch <laughs> on the on the channel. So, so just saying, just saying. Um uh are we done uh, it, uh right okay one more one more thing one more thing and this is addressed to there are some of you out there who are currently guest members as as you all know uh over the last couple of months i have 
I have done a, uh, I've hosted a, a premiered podcast and a premiered podcast is where we all, uh, I announce a forthcoming podcast, which typically happens on a Sunday at the moment. And what I, what I do is I am on standby and there is not, a, I, it's not live, but the, but the, the chat, the text chat is live. And so we have interesting conversations via chat on the screen as the video proceeds. And I really enjoy those. I really enjoy the interaction, as you know. Um, uh, there's only a few of you that do it, that participate. I think the most I've had is about 20 people. But, you know, I'll tell you what. Trying to type and answer people's comment, respond to people's comments when there's 20 of you is, is quite, quite a tall order. Um, so I'm quite happy with that. It's a very, 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 uh, low key thing. But as part of that, as you have discovered, uh, I, I, uh, release typically five free guest memberships, which only last a month. And what I, what I want to just clarify is that when I, I, I release these guest memberships, um, but I don't have any control over who gets them. So this is, this is what I'm trying to say. Uh, the actual randomness of the distribution is done entirely by the YouTube algorithm. I don't, I, there's no favoritism. Uh, in fact, there's been one or two people that have had a guest membership more than once and fair play to them, uh, because you've got to be in it to win it. Uh, so I don't have any control over it. It's a bit of fun. Uh, and also the reason I do it is because it, because it, it's something that I pay for out of my own pocket, as it were. Um, is then they're not free. I, I have to pay for them. Uh, but, but the reason why I do it is because, um, it's, it gives people, uh, like a random chance of, of having a look at what goes on behind the scenes. And some of my, some of my videos are behind the scenes, as, as you know, if you're a channel member. Um, and, uh, I, you know, it's a bit of, bit of fun. Uh, uh, so I think at the moment I've got about, uh, six or seven v channel members who are, uh, guests, as it were. Um, I'm probably going to carry on doing this. Uh, so if you're, if you're, interested in uh channel membership finding out what it's all about then 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 uh, take your chances and join in and watch my if you're watching one of my premier podcasts then there is a chance that you will you will win for want of a better word a channel membership which will last for 30 days 31 days i think um but for any of you out there and this is like a plug uh, there is a, I have a growing number of channels. Last year, I was just sort of maybe one or two videos ahead of everybody else. But this year, uh, I think it's 18 at the moment, uh, because I've just released several to the wider viewing public because of the, ink, my first ink and paper day. Uh, but, uh, it's typically 25 and it's heading towards, the plan is to be 50 videos ahead. Now, if you think about that, that means you're three months ahead of the game, potentially. Um, most videos will be early access, so the wider viewing public will get to see them in the fullness of time. Uh, but um, I am trying to make regular exclusive videos largely behind the scenes stuff uh, that may be of interest to people uh so why not join pay your your pounds 
and and join for a month. Uh, see see what you think, and uh, there's no commitment. If you decide that what you see is not what you're looking for, then it's easy to discontinue it. But you're not locked in for a long period of time, like a year or something. You can just join for join for a uh, for a month and maybe maybe just join for a month and then binge watch everything um but whatever you decide to do you're in control you decide and uh and oh the other thing is there are a few perks like uh, you are more visible to me with the comments hence why many not all of them but many of the comments that are subjects in my podcasts uh, come from channel members uh, but also occasionally I will specifically make a, a video directly as a result of a request from a channel member uh, so there are some kind of hidden perks as it were some some small perks that, that I don't generally advertise as it were because nothing is set in stone there's no guarantee that you will get a specific uh comment from a response a response from me or you'll get your you'll get your idea turned into into a video uh but it is one of those things worth considering perhaps if it works for you great um but anyway i am now at one hour 16 which is long enough thank you very much for uh staying on to the uh I was going to say the after party, but it's not. It's the it's the business side of the flattability channel, uh, and uh, and and some of you from the stats, I can see that some of you stay on to to listen to the the nitty gritty of it. Um, but um, whatever side of the fence you are, thanks very much for watching. Until my next podcast and indeed my next video, thanks very much and goodbye. <laughs>